Again, Jules fans, welcome back to the latest episode of Jules in the Blood TV. It is Wednesday night, which means it is match preview showtime and the big games keep coming thick and fast. Just 24 hours or so on from our draw against Stockport County and also Wrexham's draw against MK Dons. All those promotion hopefuls playing each other Tuesday night. I'm pleased to say that I'm joined by Nathan Salt and he is part of the brilliant Rob Ryan Red Wrexham podcast. I'll put all their details in the description at the bottom of this video. So look ahead to what will be a massive afternoon in Kent. Believe it is sold out, home and away. All the posh seats have gone as well. So as all the makings have been, dare I say it, a Hollywood afternoon. Nathan, first of all, appreciate you coming on. Thanks for having me on, Matt. Really appreciate it. No, been looking forward to it. Like I say, just before we press record, unfortunately wasn't in a position to do match previews for the return, the reverse fixture back in November. So I've been, uh, yeah, counting down the days to, to try and grab one of you for this one. So looking forward to it. Right. I think best place to start is always recent form to give us an idea. Jules, I will run through quickly because everybody who is a Jules fan will know that. The last six have bought six points from 18. So fairly inconsistent at the moment. Stephen Clements' men. There's been a very good win against Notts County. There's been a credible draw against Stockport. Some frustrating draws against Walsall and Swindon and a couple of defeats at MK Dons and Newport last Saturday. In terms of Wrexham, I have just come out at the end of a little bit of a sticky trot. So there were three defeats to Newport, Salford and Bradford, and they preceded a narrow win at Strugglers Sutton before an impressive win against Notts County by one goal to nil at the racecourse ground. And then most recently, as I've already said, credible one-all draw at Stadium MK. They sit third with 59 points from their 32 games so far. Yeah, like I said, Nathan, I think it is fair to say that both teams have probably not been at their best in recent weeks and it represents a good opportunity to to sort of get back on the horse, so to speak. Yeah, uh, you know, from Rexon's point of view, the away form, you know, m most of those defeats you spoke of there, two or three of them were, mm. two out of the three were, were away. You know, Newport, we went down to 10 men, we lost there and we were comfortably beaten there, really. Even when we had 11 v 11, we didn't look right. Mm -hmm. um, they were obviously very amped up ahead of that Man United game, so you could kind of caveat that we hadn't lost in, in a long time. Then the Salford game, we were really poor. That mm -hmm. was probably the worst I'd seen us in a, in a long time. They ripped us apart. You know, we, we didn't look like we wanted it, um, which is always difficult as a fan when you, when you go there. You don't want to accuse anyone of mm -hmm. not trying or anything like that. But we were really, really, really poor. Blackburn, obviously, we lost in, in between that um, yep. in the FA Cup and we got well beaten. And I think we kind of went there maybe a little bit naive, um, thinking that we were maybe going to turn over this championship team as we did uh, as we did Coventry and you know they had the championship's top scorer playing and, and it looked like it and that they did a job on us that didn't help the confidence it was three defeats and you know then we went to Sutton and they really played well and and probably should have had a penalty it bore hits James McLean's hand at the other end I would have been furious mm -hmm. with that if it hadn't been given and you know, it takes an Elliot Lee goal very, very late. And, you know, I dread to imagine what the mood would have been like if we'd have not won there as well. Um, Notts County, I know their fans are absolutely raging with what was a handball from David McGoldrick that would have got a point. So we're not playing this free-flowing football that we had earlier in the campaign. Mm -hmm. Like when you came to the race course, I thought we completely dismantled you. Um, I thought Gillingham at the time were or one of the worst, you know, maybe we caught you on a really, really bad day, like ourselves at Salford. I think that was Stephen Clements' first league game, wasn't it? So yeah. was, obviously yeah. we come through the interim period and that type of thing. And yeah, I think we had a little mm. spell where we potentially could have had a penalty, if I remember correctly. But well, I mean, you can't, you can't give any team a head start like we did, let alone a team like Wrexham. Right. And then, you know, then, you know, we kind of got that win at Sutton. That was a springboard. We kept saying it had to be a springboard. Mm -hmm. Notts County, as they always do, and you beat Notts County recently, they have a lot of the ball and they don't often do a lot with it. They didn't really force a Conquer into many saves. A couple that he made that were really, really mm -hmm. good saves, one from McGoldrick in the first half particularly. Um, but that's what you want from a keeper that we think is the best in the league. You'd expect mm -hmm. him to, to pull up some big saves. We get that 1-0 win, so you've beaten Sutton by one goal to nil. You've beaten Notts County by one goal to nil. Not amazing, but they're wins, and they're just that's building it. that building that confidence again. We go to MK Dons and look, you know, that was a game on another day we could win. MK Dons fans are furious that, you know, did the ball go over the line? Did it not? That's well, I've had a few looks today. I'm not yeah. sure. So if, right. if I'm not Mike, sure with the benefit of a replay, the referee right. got a second well, to make it. Mike Williamson, th Mike Williamson thinks the EFL have, have already choreographed Wrexham's promotion to League One. So he thinks it's all signed, sealed, delivered, which is good news for, for our podcast. We can just get ready for the promotion party. Um, 
but you know it, that that's a, that will be a creditable draw at the end of the season. Um, that will look good. We drew at Mansfield. That's going to look good at the end. And we drew at Barrow. There have been draws that haven't looked so good away at Bradford. And respectfully, I think Gillingham are in that playoff hunt. But really, if we're to turn the screw to win the league and maybe not just try and cling to third spot, I think we've got to go to Gillingham and and really try and take the game to you. I think we've got the quality and. We've dropped some big players recently. Paul Mullen to the bench on Tuesday. Mm-hmm. Elliot Lee dropped to the bench on Tuesday. You know, if that doesn't ignite the fire going to Gillingham for some of these players to get back in, I, I, I don't know what will. Yeah, I did notice it was a, it was a much changed lineup um, in your most recent game. I'm just bringing up the fixture now, actually, just to go through it in in more detail. Obviously, there'll be one that's banned. I take it that'd be Will Boyle after his um right Mr. Mr. Mina. But yeah, he started with Dolby and, and Marriott up front. Yeah, and, and James McLean looks like in a slightly narrower role. Was that correct in the middle? In a yeah, sort was, of three-man he, midfield? He, that was it. So he, he essentially replaced Elliot Lee as that kind of mm-hmm. most advanced of the, of the midfield three. George Evans, who's been brilliant for us as the kind of defensive anchor point, he's injured. Mm-hmm. James Jones, another who's, we call him the Duracell bunny. He's got so much energy on, on the right of the midfield. He's injured. So suddenly you get a couple of injuries and, and we do look a little bit light now. In midfield, I mean, we've got Luke Young, we've got Andy Cannon, we've got James Jones, and they're very tenacious, putting a lot of tackles. They, they all know how to slide tackle, which is very, very good, and gets big roars from the away end. But maybe, I, I'm just saying on our podcast, maybe they don't know how to pick the lock quite like an Elliot Lee can or, mm-hmm. or quite like a Jordan Davis or someone, you know, George Evans has played much higher up. So we'll see. We'll see if anyone's back in time for the weekend. But, yeah, much change. James McLean inside, Jacob Mendy. Gives you that more defensive mindset, uh, left wing back, and you know Ryan Barnett and, and Luke Bolton on the right have got pace to burn. So whoever's down your left side will have a very tiring afternoon, I would imagine. So yeah, we'll see. Lots of changes. Dolby and Marriott was very surprising. That was puzzling for a lot of people. Ollie Palmer was one where we actually thought he could end up at Gillingham. You know, in uh, in January he was out of favour, and didn't we? Through yeah, the front we, of the we window, thought, there was a little whisper about it. Yeah. There was a little whisper or whisper or two definitely up in Wrexham. And, uh, you know, I'm, he's chomping at the bit to start now. He's not quite getting that that start. He's been used off the bench, maybe last 15, last 20. But let's see. It wouldn't shock me if he started at the weekend, maybe in place of Dolby. It's a, it's just an embarrassment of Richie's Like I am jealous. I'm not going to pretend any other way. That You've got people like Jordan Davis, who you've mentioned, and Ben Tozer didn't even get on on Tuesday night. And you're bringing on Palmer, Mullin, Barnett and Lee. Yeah, it's... um. It's a squad to be envious of, and you know it's um, it's it's probably one of the best that's, that's come out of the national league into League Two in recent years. Um, so let's talk about it. Um, I think we all know how it's been built and why it's been built. This this Wrexham sort of superpower, and and we've all seen the documentary and enjoyed the documentary. I certainly have. I can't talk for everyone. I guess. The flip side of of Rob McKell and I and, and Ryan Reynolds is obviously you get some attention and some abuse for it. Oh, you're buying your way to success and all that type of thing. But just give us an insight as a Wrexham fan, what it's not just done for the football club, but for the community as well. Because I've watched the documentary and there's a lot of stuff about what's going on in the community and they played a massive part in that. So just, just give us a bit more insight into that. Yeah, sure. Um, they've been absolutely crucial to injecting that hope back into a community that was losing its way a little bit the football Mm -hmm. club is the embodiment of that area it is the cliched heartbeat of the town city now but it'll always be a town to the fan base Mm -hmm. and uh you know you you can walk up crispin lane and you know we've now got that temporary cop so you feel like you got Mm -hmm. four sides back that wouldn't have been possible without them coming in we've got players and embarrassment of riches that we were never uh, be it, going to be able to afford on on the fan ownership model, and that's not no knock on the fans. We did what we could uh, mm-hmm. with that, build the budget and shaking the buckets for transfers. But you know, you were always shopping in the bargain basement, and never your Elliot Lees, your your Jack Marriotts, your Paul Mullins, your Ollie Palmers. You're never going to be able to get anyone like that. Um, and the list could go on and on of, the, of those sorts of players. And what they've done is they. They haven't made it all about them. I, I, st- I do stand by that. They really mm-hmm. have got football people in. They've wanted to enjoy it. Of course they have. But that mm-hmm. documentary and the whole story could be a lot more about them mm-hmm. than 
than it is actually they, they've really trusted in the football people to make football decisions les reed in the background we yep. don't hear a lot from but he's, he's key, clearly a key decision maker sean harvey calls pretty much all the shots in terms yep. of contracts negotiations transfers phil parkinson and you've got his lad as an analyst you've got steve parkin people that have been in the game a long time um kev mulholland come from the republic of ireland set up you know set up a really really good medical department for us you know and they go and get people the gym that Wrexham have got now was created by a guy called Don Saladino, who's basically the fitness coach for Deadpool. You know, he knows how to put a good gym together. Again, okay. that's just connections. That's just connections. I promised myself I wouldn't say that word, but you've brought it up, so that's fine. Yeah, that's, that's, <laughs> connect, you know, that, that's connections, you oh, know, that, course, that, that is. Why not use them? Right, and, and, and even look at something like Anthony Ford when his wife got diagnosed with a brain tumour and Ryan Reynolds intervened to get him the top specialist or get her the top specialist in New York. Things that won't catch headlines probably outside of Wrexham or they won't stay headlines for long, mm. but really do matter. And of course. You know, things things recently even donating to uh, Frank Rothwell, the, the older owner and his charity ventures yep. and getting a fan at, with cerebral palsy, especially a modified bathroom and renovating parks in the area the ryan rodney reynolds memorial Park that's coming soon i believe uh, you know and all these things that they make nice little skits and they might ne- they make nice headlines and nice mm-hmm. videos and chris pratt can come and do a video with rob McElhenney and all these sorts of things but actually it's legacy stuff it really is legacy defined if you pr- deliver a stadium a, a completely renovated stadium and, and you get wrexham to the championship and who knows that they'll they'll call it a day one day of course they will and mm-hmm. um, like all owners do you, 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 nothing lasts forever but what they're doing is they they promised to get us out of National League. They did that at the second time of asking. They, you know, are promising to make us a global force. I think we can all agree that you know, Wrexham are widely known now, particularly in the States. I went over on the yep. tour in the summer. You know, they are huge out there. Probably in, in that maybe big big six Premier League and then a couple of others in Wrexham. They're, they're firmly in that mix in terms of just the profile they get on ESPN and all these other channels. So this, they promised a lot and they've delivered a lot. Mm. And before that, I don't want to say it was hopeless before that, because we would still go to the games. And yeah, for some people, when it was more of a closed shop and it was a bit small and you did feel more connected to it and you did, you could just rock up on the gate and pay your fiver and pay your tenner and go in. Yeah, of course, some people do like that. And some people don't like the the scrutiny and the fume that comes, you know, everything is Wrexham have cheated their way to this and have bought their way to that. And some people don't like that. Some people are very upset about that. But mm-hmm. if anything, I like it. I like relish now. What I was getting a little bit sick of all the patronizing pats on the head of, you know, wouldn't it be nice if Wrexham got up and now everyone wants to relegate you to the lowest, lowest point in the pyramid. I absolutely love it. <laughs> why not? And why not enjoy it? Like I've said already, because I think as outsiders, if you take that approach to, you know, wanting Wrexham to, to to fail. But I'd imagine if any fan had the opportunity to support a club that's being treated the same way as you, they'd, they'd revel in it as well. And that's the the ironic thing about it. I guess you just have to keep pinching yourself to a degree, don't you? Like you've listed these players and, and what the two of them are doing for the football club. I think you've named some of them, but I've written down Ben Toes and Will Boyle, James McLean, Elliot Lee, Stephen Fletcher, Ollie Palmer, Paul Mullin, Jack Marriott off the top of my head. It's a ridiculous squad for the level it's probably a squad that, dare I say, and, and not to put too much pressure on anyone if you do go up, is, is probably well equipped to, to be absolutely fine in, in League One as well. Um, it's interesting you say that because the big debate in the fan race is, is it okay. equipped for League One? Because just take the strikers, for example, and again, maybe maybe we're just getting greedy now. You know, we've had all these embarrassment of Richie, maybe we're getting greedy, but you look at Paul Mullin, Ollie Palmer, Jack Marriott, Sam Dolby, Stephen Fletcher. Stephen Fletcher's turning 37. Potentially, oh, yeah. you know, if it, if he would agree to it, I think fans would want him to sign another one-year deal. He'd mm-hmm. be more than good enough in League One. Mullins on a long-term contract. You'd have Dolby, Marriott and Palmer, I believe, going all into their final years. Question marks over all three of those. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, Marriott was binned off basically by a team struggling in League One in Fleetwood, you know, needing goals and they were quite happy to cash in on him. Ollie Palmer looks out of favour. He doesn't play as much as, as he wants to. He would like a new contract. I'm sure he would. Um, he wouldn't, you know, he's got his clothing line, his Wrexham clothing line and all that. And um, But he, he doesn't seem, at least right now, he doesn't seem flavour of the month. And Sam Dolby is young and, you know, a lot of people have just got opinions on him. Is his ceiling League 2. He he hasn't scored in, in the league yet for us. So, 
uh, question marks over him. And again, you go through the defence. Ben Toes is out of contract at the end of the season. No offer there, as we know yet. Aaron Hayden, another who's been brilliant for us in the last two seasons. He's out of contract. Jordan Tunnicliffe's out of contract. The goalkeeper, he's on loan. Can you actually get him as a free agent? I'm sure, you know, there'll be lots of clubs interested in him far higher up the pyramid. So it's really, you know, James McLean be another year old. But it, it, it's a really interesting mix. Captain Luke Young, he's out of contract. Okay. So what I would say is this squad is stacked to get out of League Two. And, and I think, I know some fans say if we don't go up, it it isn't the end of the world. And it's not the end of the world, but I think it would be very, very disappointing with the money Wrexham have invested the players they've got, the quality mm-hmm. they've got, they're third now. They're in the top three with another game in hand on fourth. Yep. It's, I'm speaking to you now on the 21st of February. Mm-hmm. It's in Wrexham's hands on February the 21st. We've got basically two months left of the season, 14 games left. Yep. And by the time, in a week's time, we'll, we'll have seven home games and five away games. We've got, what, the best record at home. Mm-hmm. If we don't get that top three from there, I think that is a real disappointment i think we've blew it then because it's in our hands we've got the best home form we've got seven home games five away um it's in wrexham's hands and that squad has more than enough quality to to get over the line you've almost answered my next question i've written what is the aim now is it is it third place for us first and foremost make sure you get enough points to to go up or or does the title have to be the aim now with the game in hand <sighs> No, I, 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 the title would be the cherry on top. I think if that's you if you offered Wrexham, right, okay. yeah, if that's the icing. If you if you give Wrexham third, if you offered Wrexham fans third place now, we'd all come around, shake your hand, say thank you very much, and we'll see you in League One next season. I, I think, yeah, it would be it would be nice, wouldn't it? It, it would. But Stockport missed out on in a penalty shootout to Carlisle. Mm-hmm. They've stacked the deck again, and they've got a good team. And if they win it, they win it. And if Mansfield win it, I, we actually said that Mansfield are the best team we've played this mm-hmm. season. They yeah, look the best team fight. we've played. So if they win it, fine. For Wrexham, you just got to get in that top three by hook or crook. Crew are coming on strong. They look a good team. But, you know, you, you, you rattled off all those names there for Wrexham. I mean, we're talking about a squad now where Paul Mullin has only got 10 goals. He's been battling that injury. He's still got, you know, points to prove. I th- well, not points to prove, but he's still got to prove to himself, I think, that he'll want to get a few more goals. Mm-hmm. Elliot Lee has got 20 goals in his sights. He's on 14 in the league. You know, six more in the next 14 games, doable from mm-hmm. him, from, for his sake. So as players that have, have got things on their mind that, that they want to, you know, scores they want to settle maybe, um, given the recent run. So, yeah, we, we've. I just think we've got to do it now with the quality we've got. We, we went for Luke Bolton in, in January that week in Salford and we went and got Jack Marriott. We stacked the deck. We get, sent Jake Bickerstaff, a young young striker, out on loan to Accrington. We got in Marriott. Yeah. He's very experienced. You know, Phil Parkinson is a very experienced manager. We've got all the tools, all the pieces. Yes, injuries are, are kind of piling up a bit now, but look at the depth we've got that others wouldn't. Others would be decimated by these injuries. You would be down to oh, a seventeen-year. You know, you'd be down to a seventeen-year-old that would have to just try and do a job. And, and we're, you know, we've got a two-time Player of the Year to come in at central midfield uh, for us, who just made two hundred and fifty appearances for the club. So, you know, that's the level we're at. And I think the aim the aim has to be that top three because you do wonder if you fall out of that psychologically what it would be like going into a playoff. Yeah, because then it becomes almost lottery-like, doesn't it? And, and form tends to go out the window and nerves and all that start playing a part. And I've said to, to numerous people, obviously we're trying to get in there, but I don't think playoff games are, are ones that you enjoy. I think you essentially feel sick for 90, 180 right. or 270 minutes if you're lucky enough to get to Wembley as well. Um, you've mentioned Phil Parkinson. And I think we have to talk about him because am I right in thinking maybe after all the the promotion and that had died down, there was a few question marks about was he the man to take you into the the football league? He, you know, he's had he's been very good. Don't get me wrong, his CV stacks up at the level, but I think in recent years there might have been question marks, or was that just noise from outside of the football club? It's really interesting. I think. Much of the criticism of Phil Parkinson actually comes from people outside the club that maybe mm-hmm. don't uh, watch Wrexham every week and have got this idea that of, of of his style of play and mm-hmm. and football. But you know he's just hit 150 uh, games for Wrexham. I think he I think it's 91 wins in in 150 something like that. I should know that. I think it's I think it's 91 in in 150. 
that, that's ridiculous. Um, that's in ridiculous, yeah. you know that 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 is ridiculous. You couldn't have asked for much more. You know what's he been asked to do? He came in, couldn't get the players he wanted straight away. Took Stockport right to the brink. We got we we lost that bonkers game to Grimsby in the playoff semi final five four, and then they go on and get promoted. So we eventually we lost out to Stockport, who went up, and Grimsby, who went up. We reloaded, set a record points tally in the National League to win that against a very good Notts County team. And now it's nearly the end of February and we're third in League Two, looking at back-to-back -back promotions. I couldn't really ask for much more. There, there was a point recently where, especially at Salford, people were very much questioning his tactics, questioning how long he takes to change it in-game. You mm -hmm. know, I hadn't heard Parkey make a change. I hadn't heard that chant for a long, long time. I couldn't remember. I got asked when was the last time that's been sung. I, I couldn't remember. Um, so there has been some dissenting voices, don't get me wrong, in this recent run, but I do think expectation of Wrexham has almost been set way too high. You know, we've won so many games in this Phil Parkinson era that every draw and every defeat feels like a disaster. It feels cataclysmic, mm. you know, and, uh, and you are going to lose games. And, and if I dare I say, if we do go up, and I don't want to jinx it, touch wood, but if we do, League One is another beast entirely. And if we have got big turnover and, you know, I, I do just wonder what it would be like if we finished mid table or if we've, you know, where we lost a lot of games and we did learn a lot. We're in a position now where Parky's done brilliantly, but it's the first sign of trouble, the first thing that comes out is people, everybody wants to tell you how he's not the right man. And he, he's got this ceiling and you know, we're about to bump our head on the ceiling and, and all these sorts of things. Well, I mean, right now he looks like he's ready to take us into league one. And he's had form for taking teams out of League One. Yeah. So I would say write him off at your peril if, you, if you're one of these rival fans. Absolutely, yeah. And, that's, and again, this is exactly the reason we get fans on like yourself, because it, it gives us an idea of not from inside the club, but certainly people that are closer to the club and, and as opposed to just reading stuff on, on social media and stuff like that. And there's I'm just looking at your fixtures, I mean, you talk about your home form. So your home games are going to be Accrington, Harrogate, Tranmere, Mansfield, Crawley, Forest Green, and then just the small matter final day could actually be a winner takes all for the title. Not to put too much pressure on it two months out, but it essentially could be a, a, a cup final atmosphere, couldn't it? It, 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 oh, the atmosphere could be absolutely amazing. I mean, there's so many permutations of what that game could look like, and a lot it's of people are. By the way, we've not mentioned it for anyone who's not looked at Wrexham. Stockport. Because it is Stockport home final day for Wrexham. Some Wrexham fans are a little bit jittery that we might, if there's the prospect that we would have to give them a guard of honour if they were already champions at that point. Obviously, that would not go down uh, very well at all. Would they have to give us a guard of honour if we were already champions? A lot of back and forth between the fan bases. And I don't know if people had seen it on social, but there is a, uh, a flag that was made up, uh, a Christmas-themed flag uh, that was taken a shot at Wrexham, which has got hundreds and hundreds of bookmarks uh, in Wrexham circles, a Stockport fan that had it done and he was brandishing it when Wrexham were struggling a little bit um, around the Christmas period. So expect that one to get dished up uh, 10, 100 times over if uh, Stockport don't end up winning it. But yeah, you know, Mansfield and Stockport, two home games near the end. You've got Crew as well, the final two games, yeah. Crew away, which is a great local derby for us really, and uh, Stockport at home. I mean, if it comes down to the wire, then Wrexham are going to get their, their you know, Hollywood ending. People are going to call it, aren't they? They're going to have two huge games against teams that are both going to be going for the top three. But it's it's a funny one. I'm always more worried about the games like Forest Green and you know, Forest Green away coming up. I'm more worried about that, given they've got the worst home form in the league. And we've always yeah, it's looked no, just, it's no you know, lose for them, isn't it? If they get beat, yeah. everyone expects it. But if they get something... So, uh, my concern, Nathan, at this time of the season, as well as teams that are on the beach... Or perceived right. to be because they just play with no, they play with freedom then and no fear. I think they're the games that that can slip you up as well. I think sometimes if you're playing relegation teams, they've got a different kind of pressure. But it's them teams that have got nothing to play for that start concerning me as the as the finishing line comes into view. And then, but then you know even with Gillingham at the weekend, there is that sense of an unknown quantity. It's one of those teams that. I think has somewhat gone under the radar with Wrexham mm. fans. You know, we've got into back and forth with MK Dons are the latest. Obviously, Notts County, we know lots about. Stockport, we know mm. lots about. Um, people have been keeping a close eye on crew, given they've been kind of coming up on the on, mm. on the rear. Barrow, Pete Wilde's done a really, really good job there. Mm. And, and and really, since Gillingham kind of fell away a little bit from that, it was one of the early pace setters. I think they've kind of 
slipped out of the subconscious a little bit. Harrogate people were keeping an eye on with the whole Luke Armstrong fiasco. Yep. So it, it'll be interesting because it, I, I'm, I'm anticipating a different game to, to the one we saw at home. Like I said, I, I thought it was pretty comfortable at home. Wrexham mm-hmm. away are a different prospect. Um, we, we just are. We, we mm-hmm. aren't the free flow and you are getting a bit of a banged up Wrexham. So, you mm-hmm. know, if you're a Gillingham fan, a Gillingham player, you've got to try and take every advantage possible. Sold out, you know, the massive crowd, mm-hmm. great occasion. And Wrexham will be expected to go there and win. That's just the reality of it. That, that's the pressure Absolutely. on Wrexham. Yeah, and... And I totally understand that as well. Yeah. It's, um, like you say, some of it's probably generated a little bit because of all the surrounding noise, but just just looking at the players that we've already mentioned, and we've not mentioned half the squad as well. It's it's a, it's a squad that's like you say, it's very well equipped to be getting out of this division. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to it massively. I think it's going to be a great occasion. I'm just hoping that that we turn up um, and obviously get something from it. Um, just last couple of points before we start wrapping this up. I was going to ask for because we're recording on Wednesday, so there's no official team news, so we're not sure what's come out of the Tuesday games, but. I'm guessing with the rest and rotation that, that both sides have had to do in the week, we're not quite sure what the teams are going to line up as on, on Saturday. Like you said, the likes of, of Mullin and, and Lee might come back in, which is, is terrifying enough. And um, we'll be hopeful having Ollie Hawkins available from the start because he had to make do of a place on the bench Tuesday due to illness. And I, I think he plays a massive part in, in, in how successful we can be between now and the end of the season. Um, but if I can just ask you one final question and it's always the one that no one likes answering that's the dreaded score prediction uh score prediction i'll give you i'll give you my predicted lineup as well in case any gillingham fan uh fantasy okay. uh, my score prediction i'm gonna go uh i'm gonna go for a score draw i'm gonna go two each which you know to follow up the mk don's draw might be frustrating but i think if you get four points if you get four points out of look six points is obviously what we want but if you get four points out of two away games, we've got Floria home games to come. I think that leaves us in a pretty good spot. I think two each. We are a little banged up. I don't know if there's going to be any um, boost in terms of getting... If we get George Evans back, I might fancy us to win it because I think mm-hmm. he'll just be the best player on the pitch. Um, but I think the team will probably be... The Arthur Conquo in goal. Will Boyle mm-hmm. suspended now. I would imagine it would be Max Kluwerth on the left. Ben Tozer will come back in, I would imagine, in the middle. And yep. Owen O'Connell will shift out to the right. He's been very good in the centre recently, but I'd imagine Toza will come back in. I think yep. they will put Ryan Barnett back in from the start ahead of Luke okay. Bolton on the right. Okay. And I think they'll get, I think they'll go Mendy again on the left. Jacob Mendy, so that'd be back five. Uh, midfield three, I think it'll be Luke Young again. Andy Cannon, James McLean. I don't think that'll change from Tuesday night. And I think he will go up top. Paul Mullin and. Who's he going to go? Paul Mullen and I've got a weird feeling. Paul Mullen and Sam Dolby, I think. He got a lot of stick Dolby from the fans on Tuesday night and he was pretty ineffective, but I don't think he fancies playing Mullen and Marriott together. So if Stephen Fletcher's not fit, which we haven't had any update on that yet, um, I would go I would go Mullen and Dolby. But if not, Mullen and Fletcher, that'll be my team. Okay, do That's fine. I did write ours there, or what I would go with... Um rather than what Stephen Clemens potentially would go with. I'd obviously keep Jake Turner in goal. Uh, back three picks it set. Well, back five, depending on, on how, whether we're with or without the ball. So that would be from right to left, from Ayo Hutt and Connor Masters and Maxima Shadowgi and Max Clark. I'd then make a change in the middle of the park. And I know I'm going to get a bit of stick for this from Jules fans. I'd actually bring back in the club captain. He's not played for a while. But I just think if we can pair Sean Williams with Ethan Coleman and just make sure that we're really solid, in the middle of the park, just let them sit and protect. We can then allow our wing backs to get a bit higher. In front of them, I'll then have Johnny Williams and Connor Mahoney off of Ollie Hawkins, um, fitness permitting. So sort of a well, weird. If you're going to get a bit football hipster, it could be like a three, two, four, one, but old school, it'd just be a five, three, two. <laughs> um, score prediction. We're we're thinking along the same lines. I've written mine down. I've said one all. There you go. Um, but again. It's the, the old head and the heart thing, isn't it? I think if Ollie Hawkins plays and, and we're we're at it, then I think we might nick it. But it's it, I, I don't think it's a game where, where either side's going to run away from it. We've not thrashed teams this season. I know you've probably got more potential to do that than us, understand that entirely. Um and again, the old cliche, I think the first goal could be absolutely massive. Yeah, I, you know, I, I, we we haven't dished out too many thrashings, particularly away from home. You know, that hasn't been the uh, the, the the model uh, for us. 
but really i think we your, your crowd's going to be bang at it from mm. from the off you know we're going to have great away support we always do how many have you your, sold out of curiosity it's a good question i don't know i mean i don't even know what the allocation was but we sold the the full allocation that's sold out so uh, i don't know if we get it's got to be seven eight hundred or surely God. I, well, I'd, I'd, I'd have thought, I think we might have even had more, you know, uh, maybe over a thousand, I think. I mean, let me see oh, if brilliant. I can find it. Um, Excellent. But I think, I think it might be a thousand plus. Um, and I'll see if I can find it while I, while I chat. But the, re realistically, we're going to need to quieten the crowd down, aren't we? Mm -hmm. Because the, you're going to be bang at it. It's going to be Wrexham in town. Hawkins is back in. Get Hopefully. into them from the, you know, <laughs> you know, get into them. And here we go then. So we got, we got allocated 1,608 tickets. So 1,600 wrecks from there. Um, you know, that would be a good occasion for us. We'll have great away support. We always do. You're going to have great home support. I've been there before. It's, you know, it can get very noisy when it's full. Mm -hmm. And, you know, for us, it's, it's doing something that teams try to do to us, try and quieten the crowd down a bit, try and mm -hmm. settle the game down. And, and I'm, I'm looking to people like Luke Young, I'm looking to people like Andy Cannon to put your foot on the ball and 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 try and spread it wide, try and spread it to Mendy, try and spread it to to Ryan Barnett or Luke Bolton and, and stretch out that back three and just see what see what they're made of in behind, see what their pace is like, just test them out. And, and, and look, we've got good players, we've got good set pieces you know, Luke Young coming back in means we've, we've massively elevated our set pieces. And and if Mullins in there, you know, he's chomping at the bit to get a goal. Jack Marriott hasn't scored for us yet um, since he signed. So there's lots of players that that will be that will be ready to to take their chance. Oli Palmer, as I said, is desperate to to prove himself. So we go into it with a squad that played well on Tuesday, but I think can play even better. Yeah, it's interesting you say about set pieces because I think it will be a big threat from set pieces as well. Certainly. Ollie Hawkins and then Connor Masterson, I think, has got five. He's got four of them in the last sort of 10, 12 games from centre half as well. And he's had, I think, two disallowed against Swindon as well. And he hit the underside of the bar and we think it went in. So he could have had hat trick last week from centre back. So that might be one of the, the battles within the war. But Nathan, just to, to finish this up, it's been a real pleasure. I'm so pleased that you was able to join me. So thank you very much. This has been one of my um, favourite ones of the season, just to get all the sort of inside information and... We only used the word Deadpool once, or Nathan did, and I just <laughs> used it, which I think we've done very well. So, Jules fans and Wrexham fans, if you've got this far, thank you so much. Please keep hitting that like button. Please keep smashing that subscribe button because we are very close to 3,000 subscribers now. We are trying to get there, and I say it on every episode, there will be a prize giveaway as soon as we hit 3K. Uh, Saturday cannot come around soon enough. We will also be there for Match Day Live, myself, Ava, and all the gangs to come and say hello for what promises to be a good afternoon in Kent. Um, like I said, Nathan's details and the podcast details are in the description at the bottom of this video. Go and give him a follow. Go and give them a follow for all your Wrexham content over the weekend. And until next time, up the jewels. <laughs>